Every day, your body performs one of biology's most precise processes. Millions of cells divide in perfect order to help you grow, heal, and maintain your health. But sometimes, this carefully controlled process goes wrong, leading to one of medicine's greatest challenges, cancer. Welcome to Seismic, I'm Matt, and today we're exploring cancer from a scientific perspective, understanding what it is, how it develops, and why researchers are more hopeful than ever about fighting it. Now, this is a topic that affects millions of families, including many of yours, and even my own. By understanding the science behind cancer, we can better appreciate both the challenges and the incredible progress being made in prevention and treatment. At its most basic level, cancer is a disease of cell division. Remember how normal cells have checkpoints that ensure division happens correctly? Well, cancer occurs when these control mechanisms fail. Normal cells respond to signals that tell them when to grow, when to divide, and when to stop dividing. They also self-destruct if they become too damaged. It's like having responsible drivers who follow traffic signals and speed limits. Cancer cells have lost these controls. They ignore signals to stop dividing, resist signals to die, and continue multiplying even when they shouldn't. It's like drivers who ignore all the traffic rules and speed limits. This happens because cancer cells accumulate mutations, which are changes in their DNA that disrupt normal cell cycle control. Usually, it takes multiple mutations over time for a cell to become fully cancerous. Two key types of genes are involved, tumor suppressor genes, which normally prevent uncontrolled growth, and oncogenes. These normally promote appropriate growth, but can drive cancer when they malfunction. Now, here's something important. Cancer isn't just one disease. There are over 100 different types of cancer, each with its own characteristics, causes, and treatments. What they share is this loss of normal cell division control. The transformation from normal cell to cancer cell usually happens gradually through a process scientists call carcinogenesis. It typically requires multiple hits or mutations over time. DNA damage can be caused caused by many factors, exposure to radiation from sun or medical procedures, chemicals in tobacco smoke, vapes or industrial compounds, certain viruses, or even normal cellular processes that occasionally make mistakes. Fortunately, cells have amazing DNA repair mechanisms that fix most damage. Your cells repair thousands of DNA mistakes every day. Cancer usually develops only when these repair systems are overwhelmed or fail. Sometimes normal genes, called proto-oncogenes, which help control cell growth, get mutated into oncogenes that drive uncontrolled growth. It's like a car's accelerator getting stuck. Other times, tumor suppressor genes that normally act as cellular breaks get inactivated. The p53 gene, also called the guardian of the genome, is inactivated in many cancers. This process usually takes years or even decades. That's why cancer is more common in older adults. There has been more time time for multiple mutations to accumulate. However, some people inherit mutations that give them higher cancer risk from birth, which is why some families have higher rates of certain cancers than other families. When a cell becomes cancerous, it starts dividing uncontrollably, forming a mass of abnormal cells called a tumor. But not all tumors are dangerous. Benign tumors grow slowly, stay in one place, and don't invade other tissues. Think of them like a well-behaved garden that doesn't spread to neighboring yards. Malignant tumors are the dangerous ones. They grow rapidly and can invade surrounding tissues. As tumors grow, they need more nutrients and oxygen, so they send signals that cause new blood vessels to grow toward them instead. This process, called angiogenesis, helps tumors grow larger. The most dangerous aspect of metastasis, when cancer cells break away from the original tumor and travel through blood or lymph vessels to start new tumors in other parts of the body. Cancer cells that successfully metastasize are particularly dangerous because they've evolved abilities to survive in the bloodstream, invade new tissues, and even establish themselves in different organs. This is why early detection is so important. Cancer that's caught before it spreads is much more treatable than cancer that has metastasized to multiple organs. Doctors use staging systems to help describe how far cancer is spread, which helps determine the best treatment approach and prognosis. Understanding cancer risk factors helps us make informed choices about prevention. Some factors we can't control but many we can influence through our lifestyle choices. Uncontrollable factors include things like age, right? cancer risk increases with age, your genetics, you can't control your family history and any inherited mutations, and of course biological factors like your gender and ethnicity. But many risk factors are within our control. Tobacco use is linked to many cancers, poor diet,
diet and a lack of exercise increase your risk, and excessive sun exposure causes skin cancer, and even certain infections can be prevented through vaccination. Tobacco use is responsible for about 30% of cancer deaths, and yes, this includes vapes. The good news is that quitting smoking starts reducing cancer risk almost immediately, and the benefits continue to increase over time. A healthy diet, rich in fruits and vegetables, those good, good, good nutritious foods, uh, regular physical activity, maintaining a healthy weight, and even limiting alcohol consumption all help reduce your cancer risk. Some environmental and occupational exposures also increase your risk, which is why workplace safety regulations and environmental protections are so important for public health. Regular screening for certain cancers like mammograms, colonoscopies, and pap smears can help detect cancer early when it's most treatable, or even find precancerous changes that can be treated before they become cancer. Cancer treatment has advanced dramatically over the past few decades, giving patients even more hope and better outcomes than ever before. Treatment usually involves attacking cancer's key characteristics. Surgery removes tumors when they're localized and accessible. Modern surgical techniques are increasingly precise, removing cancer while preserving as much healthy tissue as possible. Chemotherapy uses drugs that target rapidly dividing cells. Since cancer cells divide more frequently than most normal cells, they're more affected by these treatments. Radiation therapy uses high energy beams to damage cancer cell DNA beyond repair. Modern techniques can precisely target tumors while minimizing damage to the healthy tissue around it. Immunotherapy represents an exciting new approach. It helps your immune system recognize and attack cancer cells. Some patients have had remarkable responses to these treatments. Targeted therapies attack specific molecules or pathways that cancer cells depend on for survival, offering more precise treatment with fewer side effects. Increasingly, treatment is becoming even more personalized based on specific genetic changes in each patient's tumor, leading to even more effective and less toxic therapies. Thousands of researchers worldwide are working on new treatments, even today, and clinical trials are constantly testing promising new approaches. Understanding cancer from a scientific perspective helps us appreciate both its complexity and why progress has been challenging but accelerating. Cancer isn't just one disease. It's many diseases with different causes, behaviors, and treatments. This scientific understanding is leading to better prevention strategies, earlier detection methods, and more effective treatments. Maybe you'll be part of the next generation of researchers who continue pushing back against cancer. While cancer remains a serious challenge, the combination of better prevention, earlier detection, and more effective treatments means survival rates for many cancers have improved dramatically over the past few decades. Now, don't forget to subscribe and let us know down in the comments. What aspect of cancer research do you find most hopeful? Thanks for exploring this important topic with Seismic. Want to explore more about cell biology and health science? Check out our complete science curriculum at seismic.com, where every student can learn, grow, and achieve.